Hello, Internet. Other people may be stealing your power, your sense of self-worth, your self-esteem, you know, whatever you want to call it. They may be stealing it from you, and they don't even know it. And the worst part is you're letting them, but you can stop. By the way, welcome to the Empirical Sword. I'm Lord Master DLC 7-9, and I believe the school doesn't teach. We have to be the masters of our education, meaning we have to learn this stuff ourselves. And boy, do I wish somebody had taught me this so many years ago. So how do you prevent people from stealing your sense of self-worth or whatever you want to call it? How do you, how do you stop that? It's actually a very simple answer. Because you're doing one thing that gives them all the power in the world to do this. Well, actually, two things. But usually it's just one thing. We'll, we'll get into the second one a little bit later. Basically, you're, or we, we, we all do this. We let our own perception of ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, our, our self-esteem, get caught up in what other people think about us and what other people tell us that we should be doing. That's it. That's the thing that we do. We have to, and we have to realize that what they're telling us and how they're judging us that's coming from a place that's good for their lives, maybe, maybe. Are, are, are they really happy with their lives? I mean, you're that, that, that's kind of the thing, you know. De depending on how we define success, about 5% of the world is successful. And the remaining 95% are not successful. And you know, scientists have actually done research. The 5% are performing actions, you know, executing things in life differently than the 95%. It's, it's, I can't really go into more specifics than things because it, it's, it's different depending on what we define success as. Uh, essentially, the 5% are far more proactive, whereas the 95% are more reactive. The 5%, they, they go out and make things happen. Whereas the 95%, they sit around and wait for things to happen and then respond. At which point it's usually too late to respond. And, and again, I'm being vague and generic because, again, it depends on what we define as success. But one of the big things that the 95% does is they model their lives after everyone else in the 95%. If you want to be in the 5%, do things the way the 5% do. 95% are playing a game of follow the follower. Everybody is doing what everybody else is doing, and it, it, it it's working, except they're not successful. They're not over here with the, the 5%. Doing things the 95% of the, doing things the way the 95% do them guarantees that you'll stay part of the 95%. And overall, the 95% are, they're okay. They're not great. Some of them are pretty bad. Sad, depressed, full of anxiety, drug problems, debt, relationship problems. I mean, overall, they're, they're, I mean, overall, most of the people in the 95%, they're okay. Just not great or exceptional or outstanding. If you want to be outstanding, you have to go the way of the 95%. I mean, I mean the, the way of the 5%. The 95%, they'll be like, oh, well, you can't do that. It's impossible. I mean, just a few months ago, you, uh, some guy told me that one man can't change the world. Who says? Can you actually prove that one man cannot change the world? Ever. Or woman. Let's, let's not be sexist. I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's the, it's, the point is, 
people in 95%, they're going to be telling you your, your dreams are impossible. They're crazy. They're stupid. They're ridiculous. It's never going to work. Why don't you do something like over this, over, over here? They're like, why, why can't you be normal? And when we allow our feelings to get tied up and how, how the 95% are judging us, telling us, telling us that we can't do things like that or that it's impossible or you're, you're thinking too big. When we allow our, our emotions and how we perceive ourselves to get tied up in that, then we give our power away. We lose self-esteem. We lose a sense of self-worth. All because we're, we want to go this way. We want to be part of the, the 5%, and we, we have an idea of how we can get there. And we want to follow that path. But other people are telling us that we can't. Other people, I mean, they, they don't necessarily want to hold us down, but their instinct is to pull us back. And there, there are all kinds of psychological reasons why people do that. And you know, that's this video is already a little longer than I wanted because I, I did a lot of rambling, but I, I think it was productive rambling, maybe, possibly, perhaps. Um, so anyway, I, I won't get into the psychological reasons of why people want to hold us back. It, it's, it's misery loves company. It, it, it's kind of the shortest way of, of putting that. It's, it's a little more complicated than that, and, and it's... Anyway, we allow ourselves to get tied up in what other people think of us, and we compare ourselves to other people. The only person we should be comparing ourselves to is who we were yesterday. Have we improved today? Are we better than we were yesterday? That's the only comparison we should be making. Thank you.